Hey folks, welcome to This Photo Life. I'm your host, Andy McSweeney. How you doing? Keeping well? Keeping right? Maybe even keeping tight? I hope so, whether it's the photography or otherwise. On today's show, we're going to be talking to Nathan Doblar. It's going to be an interview episode after so many monologues that have held the last few episodes on This Photo Life. I chat to Nathan, well, for a later episode about his life as a music concert photographer. But this episode, we're focusing it up specifically on an initiative that Nathan and some of his buddies over on the uh, music scene started up as photographers in this tough year of 2020. And that is crap. No, I'm not talking fecal matter or a photo series with tasteful lighting on feces. I'm talking about cultural rescue aid by photographers, otherwise known as crap. That is an initiative to help our beleaguered cultural scene here in this tough, tough year of 2020 with lockdowns, restrictions, and all the sort of things that are really definitely kicking our cultural ass right in the crotch on this funky year. You know, I mean, even if you can open... If you're a venue of a thousand and you're only allowed 80 people, it's not exactly great for the bottom line. And, uh, you know, it's adding up now that we're in, uh, what, good eight months of lockdown, a washed out summer, no, no fun in spring nor fall for the peripheral ends of that main uh, time of year. And with Nathan and his buddy seeing that and all the suffering that's been going on throughout the industry from, you know, job loss to sometimes slow movement on the whole subsidy side of things by the Flemish and Belgian government, they decided to open up CRAP, which, as I say, is Cultural Rescue Aid by Photographers, which is an initiative where, quite simply, they're going, th they well, they, they're going to, they've gone through their catalog of photos from all the various gigs the, uh, themselves and other Belgian photographers in the music scene have caught and donating them over towards the CRAP initiative where you can go and buy these prints through crap.photo and support the music scene because every single penny after the printing is done and the postage is paid for goes to the cultural industry, most specifically the foundation set up to uh, help them here in this year of 2020 called Live 2020. Yeah, they gave a shit in the community kind of way, didn't they? They saw a problem. They got on top of it. They managed their resources and pulled them all together. And actually put something out there that's designed to help and not just uh, stress out, worry, or, I don't know, even just be selfish at this critical time where we all have to kind of work together and come together as a community, don't we? So I'm going to be talking to him about that in a very short little while. It was a really fascinating chat, and Nathan really brought it as far as the information and just general bibble babble about the Belgian music scene. So I enjoyed that greatly, and I hope you do too. Please obviously make sure to consider supporting the CRAP initiative by picking up a photo print of one of the many, many musicians they have listed over on their site. And uh, yeah, just overall, just think about supporting each other as much as possible over this uh, dark winter that we've entered into. You know, even in a normal year, the light is short, the weather's cold in most places, I'm at least on my side of things, and I know many other, this can be the quiet time of work for tourism, for catering, for some seasonal industries, even when it's not 2020. But in this year of 2020, where a lot of that has been all year long and rather unrelenting in its toughness for some of us, especially with uh, small businesses to, uh, to consider. Hello, I'm Photo Tour Bruges. Not so much this year. Yeah, we all got to stick together and we all got to support each other. So if you can support your community in one way or another, whether it's an individual, whether it's a collective, whether it's just something that you've always found really good, but never got around to shouting out to the world how amazing it is. Now is the time, boys and girls. Just uh, look after each other and maybe we'll uh, get through this without tearing each other up and all that sort of thing. Vaccines are out there. There's a light on the horizon, even if it takes a year, maybe two or three, if we're talking about the economy, the more we stick together, the faster this passes. And uh, who knows, we may almost even enjoy it. 
So that's a little opening thought at the opening of this episode. I could talk a little more, especially with a birthday yesterday where Mrs. Andy spoiled me rotten. And on the photography side of things, she was very, very generous with the gifts. But my favorites were the uh, picture frames with some photos in them. That's stuff that we got on holiday for the personal side of things of me and the wife sitting on the beach, either in Portugal or one of the many other beaches that we have frequented on our holidays over the years. She printed a couple of those up and put them in frames so that I'd have a little bit of extra warm memory staring at me over here in the Andy Cave that I'm recording from. So that's rather nice, and I could talk a whole episode about that if you like, but I'd much rather share this talk with Nathan. And I guess in a way of other things I could talk about, which also stealthily let you know what I've been up to in the last few days. Well, tomorrow I get to uh, wander over to City Hall in the early hours and... Drop off, present, give over, whatever you want to call it. A copy of my new book to the mayor and city hall and the city archive. That's right. Bruges Landscapes Unlocked for Light, the series, book, and all that, which is linked in the descriptions that I put out just last spring, has, uh, excuse me, just last November, has uh, been accepted by city hall as something that they will put into their archives, and I feel rather good about that. I mean, hey, I get two minutes of press. That is if any press show up to this little rinky-dinky moment of of Andy's. And, well, I guess overall I just get to give something back to my community after my uh, adopted home of Bruges has been so very good to me over the last almost 19 years of living here. I mean, first and foremost, they birthed and raised this beautiful woman that I call my wife for the last 19 years. And they've been rather supportive in one way or another over the last eight years of me doing Photo Tour Bruges. So uh, it's going to feel pretty good to drop off a copy to City Hall. And actually, while I'm at it, partly by my own initiative, because I love these initiatives, I'm also going to be presenting some photos to the City Archive towards their project request that they put out uh, just last month, asking residents of Bruges and otherwise to submit any photos that they have of interest from the spring lockdown uh, last spring here in Bruges. Oh, and while I'm there, I suppose I'll also be mentioning like I am here on air, that the city of Bruges is also doing an interesting little competition at the moment where, unrelated to this archive project, they're asking residents to submit to a photo competition of photos that were taken during the last spring lockdown. Um, The winners don't get any money, but they do get some glory, and they also get a big metal print printed up and presented in a fine corner of our city. Maybe you get to keep it afterwards. I don't know. But those are two little initiatives next to uh, dropping off my book at City Hall that I think definitely deserve some focus and support. So I'm going to be mentioning those in my speech of broken Flemish, probably then giving up to going to English just so I can make the bad jokes. And that's all happening tomorrow. So that feels pretty good. And uh, I guess also me talking about it feels pretty good because it also means that you're caught up on what I'm up to in this photo life. That also means that we can get out of here as far as intros go and get to that chat with Nathan. It is a uh, really excellent little talk, in my opinion. And like I think I've made clear, but I will explicitly make clear now, this cultural rescue aid by photographers, or crap, is an excellent little initiative. And like I mentioned in the interview, I hope uh, this kind of thing spreads You know, Nathan made it very clear in our chit chat that others are welcome to mimic the idea and even get in touch with him so they can use the domain name crap.photo. So I think that is superb. You got to support the Belgian scene. And certainly that is the opening interest and prime interest at this point of the project. But like music, it's got to be free. It's got to travel and it's got to tell its story. So, uh... Definitely something I hope catches on in an international way, especially in this tough year where certainly beyond Belgium, the uh, the cultural sector is not exactly doing peachy keen, hey? Yeah. All right, it's time to talk to Nathan. We'll do a little crossfade and get into it. So here it is, my chat with Nathan Doblar about crap. Enjoy. <laughs> Well, with, 
with giggling because we've been talking backstage for a good half hour. I guess I should welcome you to this photo life. Nathan Dobelar, I hope I am saying your name cor correctly, and if not, correct me, but welcome to the show. Hello. Well, thank you, and that was almost uh, pronounced perfectly for a English-speaking person like you, so it's perfectly fine. I'm not going to correct you. Oh, right on. 18 years in Belgium. I'm getting close. Cool. Good. good, good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks for dropping by the show. Um, as I will have certainly said in the pre-intro before we fade away to this uh, little in interview, you're a local music photographer here in Belgium. Tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself before we talk about your project. I'd love to uh, have the listeners hear a little bit about you. Yeah, so uh, I'm Nathan. I've been uh, shooting concerts and festivals um, almost exactly eight years now. It started on the 12th of December back in 2012, it was. Um, and since that time, I've been shooting uh, around Europe and the US when I was on tour. I probably shot around 2,500 bands and musicians something like that um yeah and, and that's about a really short uh, summary awesome awesome that's a lot of that's big numbers too give us some of your most uh well-known uh bands that you've hit man give us a few oh, bands. well yeah well um last summer i was able to shoot uh billy eilish uh, back on pucker pop which is probably one of the most famous pop stars at the moment for sure um I've had the opportunity to shoot Foo Fighters a couple of times, um, Lenny Kravitz, Kiss. Um, oh, it's, it's really hard to think of bands. Like it's, it's like I've shot so many things. Um, it becomes. A it's blur. almost hard to rem yeah. It's hard to remember even. It's like I don't look at them like oh those are the biggest bands you know like yeah I I, I shot Billie Eilish. But, you know, the small bands are fun as well, it's, and sometimes even more fun than those big ones. So it's really hard to to say. I, I always forget. Oh, it's all good. It's all good. I like to keep people on their toes. So you answered yeah. sensibly, man. And we're going to get into this later in the show uh, when we talk about your uh, work as a music photographer. So mm -hmm. good to hear okay. some stuff up front. Nice teaser for the audience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Main thing we want to uh, talk about, I think, first and foremost, before we get lost into the art of music photography and what you're up to there, is uh, you you and other Belgian photographers over in the music scene have started a little project to help the culture sector over this tough year of 2020. And I just love it on the name already, not because it's rude. Crap is the <laughs> initiative. Cultural Rescue yes. Aid by Photographers. That's correct. Uh, awesome. And well, having dropped the name and said what crap is going on, uh, why don't you tell me all about crap, please? Because I think it's yeah. a great project. Yeah. So um, I think it was three or four weeks ago, one of my colleagues at the group where I'm, well, I'm part of a group of concert photographers. It's called CPU. We're 25 members. Um, but one of those guys posted in our Facebook group like, hey, um, like the cultural industry, they were having a really bad time, no concerts, many light technicians, sound technicians, um, small venues, they're really having a hard time, a hard financial time. Mm -hmm. And he's like, why aren't we doing something as photographers to help those people out? And that idea um, was a little spark that set a, a whole thing in motion with um, six photographers in total, we, we worked us out. And we thought like, hey, what can we do as concert photographers to help those people? And it came uh, really quick to us like, okay, let's do what we're best at. And it's like, we have so many photos that we just, we shot for our customers. Like we work for the Sport Palais, we work, we work for the VRT, but there's always digital. So why don't we do something with it? And like, let's sell prints. We have so many pictures, like, and I think people can be interested in that. And let's do all proceedings will go to the Life 2020 Fund. So that's an organization um, set up by people in the industry to help those small um, self-employed people out. And yeah, that's how the idea 
started, and that was four uh, four weeks ago. Um, we had some meetings, and then we thought, like, why don't we just not only do it with those 25 photographers in that group, but why don't we invite some friends over? Because in Belgium, we have so many concert photographers. Um, and, like, let's just invite friends, see people who can help us, people who are big names who are working for newspapers, who are photographers of, uh, for example, Rock Vogta Festival. Uh -huh. Just shared that idea with them and they were all really enthusiastic and they said like yeah, if we can help we would love to help and that's how the the entire idea started um and in a really short time so in those um in those four weeks we we built an entire website we contacted so many photographers we collected their photos built something great with the team we have and i'm i'm actually really proud on how we as a collective of people with the same like-mindedness, like we love those concerts, we love the industry, that we came together and, and did our little part in helping the music scene to survive. Absolutely. And yeah, that's it. I man, that's fantastic stuff. You guys should be proud too. I think it's just an awesome initi initiative. Are oh, you thank the, you. Uh, please. Are you the first ones to be doing this as far as you know, as far as music well, photographers pitching into the industry, to the cultural sector? Well, in Belgium, I think we are the first ones. You like for the like 20, 20, 80, there, there have been many, many things that um, – are being put up by other people, like even venues like a depot in, in Leuven um, is selling T-shirts, yeah, Studio Brussels is doing their part. Uh -huh. So there are a lot of different things, but I think we're the first ones in Belgium that uh, put something up. And it's, I think it's the first time in, in, the, in the history of concert photography in Belgium that photographers from different organizations, from different outlets combine their works to give something back to a good cause. I think that's the first. Awesome. Hey, man, it's an achievement in any way. And especially since you're going just outside of like your regular community of, uh, of, of music photographers. That's fantastic. I mean, did you just reach out straight to the papers? Was it, was it a bit of sort of putting together your resources for networking and such? Well, yeah, the thing is with concert photographers, there are many photographers, but we are always in the same places. Like concert photography is most of the time you, you shoot the first three songs, uh, always from the between the barriers and the stage. In so, the yeah, and, and the pit indeed. Uh -huh. So those people, you know them pretty well, because if you go to festivals, some festivals, you have 30, 40 photographers in that same photo pit. You talk a lot because you share the same passion, of course, eh? that photography, you love the music. So we talk a lot. So since we already were with 25 photographers, we just said like, hey, give me the names of all the photographers, you know, that you think that should be involved. And we just reach out to them directly through Facebook, through mails. And we just share the idea we have with all of them and then see like how many people are willing to help us out. And we ended up with an initial list. I think we had about 60 photographers, 40 of them agreed on, on, on helping us out. Uh -huh. And then since we launched, we got, I think, 15 new requests of other photographers that want to help out and share pictures and make some advertising or put it in their social media or, or whatever. Everyone was really enthusiastic about the project because I think it was a first. Yeah, yeah. And hey, even next to being first, it's something worth supporting. I mean, especially right now, I've always been a big proponent in these tough times that we have to um, support support the cultural sector to get light into this dark time. You know, music lifts you up, visuals, photography, art forms in so many ways beyond those two. That's all about just touching the soul and kind of keeping us going in these tough times. Eh? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's also like, if we don't have those light technicians and, and those sound technicians and the small venues, then we, we're out of a job in the future as well. And that's something we want to preserve, of course. It's like we know and we know that the Belgian government didn't do actually well, not a good enough job regarding to the cultural sector. That's my personal opinion, of course. Uh -huh. But I think they could have done way better. And that's also 
probably why the Life 2020 initiative was uh, set up in the first place. But yeah, we just want to save that sector a little bit. Like there are so many people who, who are out of a job and they don't know anything else because you study to become a sound technician or you you study to become a light technician and you can't tell those people, well, yeah, now you have to become an accountant. That's just impossible. So for that reason, because we want to have that that vision of the future that where we can go to concerts without issue like that we're sure that it's still there that's the reason and that's the reason why we all came together like that i think because we love it so much absolutely absolutely and that's a major point too the uh just the fact that there's so many jobs on the line if we want to get through this and then come out the other side not only just having to rehire everything everyone and get everything together again you got to have this uh economy of jobs somewhat intact yeah. And I want to dig in a little bit on how you feel uh, about the Belgian government handling all this and that sort of thing. Um, but I think we can agree at the outset, we're not living in the worst country here in Belgium where we pay a lot of taxes and subsidy programs, I think, have been a bit generous since uh, since this thing hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, well, Belgium is a good country to live in. I think we can agree. Yeah. We, we all can agree to that. It's a lovely country, but... Before we rip into them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, it's a lovely country, but yeah. um, no, like for me, and, and I'm just talking about culture. I'm not going to even elaborate on other parts because then, then we have a probably a conversation of many hours. And I, since it's a photography podcast, let's not do that. But Fair. Yeah, I think for the politics, tell me, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we have an idea for a new, uh, like an entire new podcast series, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you guys barely tolerate me as it is. No, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, tell um, me, uh, tell me how, how you see it. The good, the bad, uh, how the government's handled this, where we're at now. Please go for it. Yeah, well, I think, of course, I'm not a specialist. Like, and, and, and that's, that's all, also something to take into account. Like, I just follow the news and I have my opinion. I don't know how everything is going uh, within the government, how everything is going in venues, because I'm just a concert photographer and I'm not linked to any one of those. Like, you know, I'm, I'm just self-sufficient to, to say it like that. Um, but what I thought like in the beginning was like, okay, the venues had to close and I understand that. And then the rules came and then I had the feeling that everything was really strict compared to the rest of Europe. When you looked at Germany, you had those drive-in concerts. Mm -hmm. When you look to the Netherlands, they still have theaters ongoing right now. Um, they're not closing the venues down. Of course, there is, uh, they are the measurements they, they, they put in place, but it's like, it feels less strict in the other countries throughout Europe than in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something what I didn't like about this whole period is like we had absolutely nothing except this summer, a, a couple of like, you had the rock work to sing with it was open air, but a maximum of 200 people. Well, that could have been like probably a thousand if it was well organized. I don't know. I think it could have, it could have done something different that could have worked as well. Um, not saying they didn't do a good job, of course, because I know it's a, it's a really tough period. It's completely new for everyone. And we live in a country with way too many governments that makes it even more complex. Absolutely. But yeah, I think, yeah, that's my idea of what they didn't do correctly. But I think if you would talk to people who are like really involved, like the people from the venues, mm -hmm. uh, the people who make the music, I think they could probably tell you even more than I can, like why it didn't or they didn't do a quite a good job. Sure, sure, of course. And and hey, definitely you're seeing this as part of the community more than an expert or anything. Mm -hmm. But it does seem to reflect a lot of what I've heard here in Belgium and even some other places. I mean, you can take all that down to personal feelings, politics on it. But I, I also have to agree with you that I do feel for the cultural sector, they were a bit strict. Even over summer, I can kind of understand the initial lockdown, especially. And now we're recording this in late November, excuse me, beginning of December. And basically everything is shut down and staying that way. They've only just be basically reopened shops, I think, for Christmas period. 
Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing also, like you gave the example, there was uh, something going on, but you could only have 200 people. Is that even financially viable for those venues and organizers to hold it at that point? Do they lose yeah, money? Do they even make something? I don't think they really made money. And I think like, I think that Oak Works, I think, was organized for the Life 2020 support. So I think even the proceedings they had went through that funds to support yeah. the industry. Of course, we're talking about Rock Work. There, it's a Live Nation festival. Um, Live Nation owns quite a lot of of of, of, the, of all the cultural events in in Belgium and in the world. Yeah. So they probably have some reserve to do stuff like that. Um, I think for smaller venues, it's way more difficult to organize. Like I can imagine, like a venue like a Depot or Trix, which is a, quite a small venue in in space that. For them, I think Trix had to or it could uh, have a maximum capacity of 50 or 80 people. I think I think it was 80 people was the max capacity, and that's a venue that normal capacity is 1,100 people. Jesus, that's a big difference. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, why would you organize concerts if you can only like allow 80 people to join? Like you have to pay for for the people, the electricity, the bands, like. I can't imagine that that's ever being profitable, though on the other side, I think many bands just wanted to go out and play, even if they didn't earn the money for it, is like to make, to play live, to sell their merchandise, because they live of merchandising, yeah. especially with Spotify not play, paying uh, the magicians enough. Mm -hmm. Like, I think many bands would have loved to just go out and play for those 80 people, yeah. but not if it's like resulting in a loss of money, of course, it should have been a break even organ a thing. And that's, I don't think that was possible, but again, I'm not a, I'm not a booker. I'm not a tour manager. I'm just a plain simple guy with a, with a cannon in my hands. And that's it, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And good disclaimer too. That'll keep the lawyers off our back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Huh. Interesting. Well, if I can, um, if I can dig into your project a little bit more, I mean, you've told me where mm -hmm. the idea came from and just sort of how it's all firing up, how your connections are all sort of coming into place. Um, mm -hmm. This is entirely Belgian based by the looks of it, except for maybe some of the sponsorship, which totally makes sense. Coming uh, Ticketmaster, I see on the websites there. So that's good that you got some bucks off them is mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> let me dig into that just a little bit more because well for example you're doing the printing straight out of ghent which is one of the big student cities here in flanders yeah so so the idea was to start is like how are we going to allow our dutch friends to join and we thought like it's maybe it's a bit weird to invite dutch photographers to help save the belgian music scene so uh -huh. The idea quickly came around like, okay, let's just organize it with only Belgian photographers, not even our friends from the Netherlands, only Belgian photographers. And then the second question was, of course, are we going to sell prints of only Belgian bands? And we thought like, yeah, no, let's not do that. Let's not put a limit to it. Just say we sell prints, whatever it may be, but mm -hmm. only from Belgian photographers. For that reason, we also decided like, of course, with the CPU thing I talked about, like the Concert Photographers United, that organization of 25 photographers, uh -huh. um, we uh, we work for VRT News, uh, we work for um, Proximus Music, we work for uh, Dancing Bears, which is an online um, blog, but we also are the house photographers of uh, Sport Palais Group, uh -huh. which is, uh, they own the biggest venues in Belgium. And we're also, um, um, like, Ticketmaster is using our pictures in Belgium as well. So we thought, like, okay, we can set this project up and we can have some, like, build a momentum around it. But it would be great if, like, those big names like Sport Palais and Ticketmaster, we have a really good connection with, if, like, they helped us out as well, like, like spreading the word. Like, and so we just... Ask them like, hey, we're going to do this. This is for a good cause. We don't uh, earn any money with it ourselves. We just give everything away to a good cause. Like, are you willing to um, to spread out? Like, okay, this is going live, and you share it on Facebook, you share it through your newsletters, everything on social media. 
And they were like really enthusiastic about it and just like, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So that's, that's what we did. Like we went live on, um, and I have to check uh, which day it was. It was last Friday. So that was on the 20th, well, it was Thursday evening on the 26th. Um, the moment we went live, like Ticketmaster spread the world. We are part of the newsletters. Um, they shared on social media. So yeah, that's that's what they did. So that's almost the only international between brackets help we got and we allowed. Uh -huh. um, and on the other hand, like we thought, like if we're going to keep it Belgian, how are we going to print these products? Because we're talking about great photographers, some great pictures um, in there as well in the catalog. Um, we have around 370 photos that we sell now. Um, but we wanted to ensure the quality and we wanted to keep it Belgian as well. And um, so we came to uh, Hut Objectif, uh, which is a, um, it's a, it's a really nice lady who owns the place. She's called Marike. Uh -huh. um, and she, she has like uh, some spaces that she rents for students, for um, photographers who want to work on really uh, high-end devices and who want to print themselves. Um, oh, cool. And, so she rents out like tech and stuff like that. Yeah, she rents out tech and, and, and expertise as well because she's really good with printing. Awesome. And you can ask her help. Like you can edit your photos on calibrated screens. And then you can ask to print them and she's going to check the photos. And this is this is something where she's great at as well. As like what we're doing now is like with uh, with crap. Um, she's going to check all the individual photos and she's going to say which paper is the best paper to use for that specific photo. Oh, fantastic. So you can batch them up and print them that way. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah and it's always the highest quality. She will check print by print if everything is correct if the colors are great if it needs to be uh, readjusted or if the paper should be different so like it's a really it's a really handmade product you're going to get in the end it's really it's, it's made with love it's printed with love and that's the reason why we picked her to um to print our pictures as you should as you should and also if she's doing that kind of setup with the places called het objective just to yeah, straighten it out a bit? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's the name. Cool. I'll put a link in the description of the episode, too, so Marika gets her her deserved shout-out. Because it sounds mm -hmm. like she's doing a bit of a community effort there uh, with her facility overall. If she's renting yeah, that stuff, true. but also d giving that kind of care and support just on regular yeah. projects and rentals. I mean, that's the sort of people you want to support and have yeah. involved in these kind of projects. That's super. Definitely. Cool. And, and, and she, you can also like ask her just to print it. So you just send her, your photos to her and she decides which paper or whatever. So you can leave it all to her or you can rent a place for a day. I think you pay 75 euros for an entire day wow. and you can use the computers and then you just have to pay for the paper. I think it is. So, and that, that's about it. And so it's a really cool place. It's a really cool environment um to work as, as well i've been there uh, because, um, i think a couple of years ago because there was a, another uh, photographer did a, a small exposition over there with concert photos uh -huh. and yeah it's it's, it's a, i love that place as well awesome. so we're we're really happy that she wanted to help us out as well and because we're talking about a quite a big batch of photos it's not like huge huge yeah. it's not the easiest product to sell we are aware of that i think not everyone is willing to put a, a, a photo of their favorite artist on a wall in their living room, of course. It can be tricky. Yeah, it's a really tricky one. And we notice that. And we notice also, because now we are one week doing this, we can notice what we're selling. It's like it's more the artsy photos are being sold, of course. Uh -huh. But yeah, for, for that reason, we wanted the quality to be the best to put up in your living room. Like if the people who are willing to do that, that they have the best quality. And that is support, of course or good cost. Yeah, absolutely. And just to be clear, because I don't think I've said it, you've said it, but I, I want to make it absolutely clear. You guys aren't making a penny off of this. It's printing no, costs, nothing. sending costs, and all the rest goes to the cause. Yeah, exactly. The only thing while we're, yeah, the website is taking as a cost as well. Although I think it's like one of the guys um, in our team sponsored it, I think. 
Okay. So, uh, Stain, if you're listening to this, uh, thank you for the sponsoring on that one. Shout out to Stain. Bedankt, Mats. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Sneak him some of yeah. my Flemish. Right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Really good pronunciation you had there. Ek work up it, Mats. Ek work up it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. That's cool. like, yeah, we, we're not keeping anything to ourselves. We're just giving everything away. As you should, as you should. I mean, this is tough times for the cultural sector. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to uh, have a chat to you like sooner than later so we could maybe get you a Christmas uh, Christmas rush of sales. Mm, that would be great. Yeah, yeah, let's hope. Hey, touch wood, even on air. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well... Let's let's take it another way. And again, remembering that you're just a photographer in the scene, but at the same time, one of the one of the active founders and members of this of this uh, initiative. What have you reached out to the Flemish government at all or the Belgian government? I mean, here it's a bit more regional. How's how's that gone? So that's a, the, the thing is that so we will uh, give our proceedings through Life 2020. So that's an existing funds that was put up in place at the beginning of, uh, of this entire sh uh, shit storm, this uh -huh. crappy period, because uh -huh. that's also the reason why we picked the name crap. Mm -hmm. um, so for that, so they are having the context with the government. Um, so we're just sending the money to them and they are doing the, um, uh, how do you call it? Yeah, they're doing all the coordination. They gather all, I think they even paid the first 60 or 70,000 euros a couple of weeks ago to people in needs. So that's already a good start. And it's only the beginning, of course. Um, but for us, like, we're just like collecting everything. We put up the store and the accounts, like the PayPal and the other things. Mm -hmm. So we're just doing our organization and then we give it to them and then we let them decide on who needs the money. And um, it's a really, if you're interested in, in more of that information, you can go to life2020.be, I think the website is. Uh, and there they give you the full explanation on how you can enroll to receive a one-time uh, financial aid um, and what um, thing, yeah, so what things you have to meet before you can uh, claim it as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Part of the subsidies going around. Yeah. And good yeah. that you mentioned them. I'll make sure to put a link in the description to, uh, to mm -hmm. what is it, Live 2020.be? Yeah, something like that. Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's live 2020.be. I'll run a quick Google search before this goes live. No yeah, what, what I can say, like, if you want to, like, the for the Dutch-speaking people who want more information, you can also go to our own website, because I haven't mentioned that one yet. Yes. So the website of the CRAP project is crap.photo. And on that website, we have a tab that says live 2020 with a full explanation. And we are going to uh, translate the site as well, because we feel that there is, like, some requests to have it in English as well, because now it's uh, mostly a Dutch site, although the checkout is in English. <laughs> cool, cool. And that's a, a good thing to reach for. Actually, I also wanted to say this is an initiative that hopefully will go viral beyond Belgium, not to ignore Belgium in the very least, but this is something that globally we could uh, all pitch in for for the for the music industry, because yeah. it's going to be a, a hard time over the next couple of years, I think, even with the mm -hmm. vaccine around the corner and a few of them announced, obviously. Um, it's going to take a couple of years financially for things to even begin to settle, I think. Yeah, definitely. So uh, for for now, we have worldwide shipping for people interested everywhere in the world. Once buy a cool concert photo, you support the Belgian scene, of course, because it's really hard to help you support your local scene. Uh, living in belgium not knowing how everything is over there yeah. but if you want to support the belgium scene we do worldwide shipping we have pictures of the biggest bands we have pearl jam we have imagine dragons we have foo fighters iggy pop uh, iggy pop is on there yeah nick cave in the bad seats sorry saw some favorites already <laughs> yeah definitely nick cave is, a, is one of the best selling ones even that black and white of him is beautiful just to uh, throw some cred over there yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, we have Rammstein as well for the metal fans, Iron Maiden, Metallica. Uh, yeah, that's that's more my music, you know. So. Oh, right on, right on. But sure. we also have like we have pictures of Tomorrowland. So even from bands, uh, we have Avicii in there. So um, it's like in many different genres. I think Post Malone is on there. We have Jay Z and Kanye West. Like it's a it's really quite a long list, and you can search on artists as well. 
So if you have a personal favorite, you can go to the website, press on artist, and then you have an A to Z uh, list, list of, uh, of the artists that we sell. Yeah, and I have to say, obviously, as you can tell, I've been over to crap.photo, which is the website, and mm -hmm. uh, it is a very nice, easy-to-navigate website, too. It yeah, really thank you. Put quite well. an effort at it. Good work, guys. <laughs> no, absolutely. Hey, um, and, you know, overall, to dwell on the website for a second, or more importantly, the photos, I think, next to the cause of it all, there's some kick-ass photos here. Some really, really good stuff. I've noticed, actually, as a side note, that um, many, many musicians speak very fondly about playing in Belgium. So mm -hmm. Faithless okay. apparently are crazy in love with Belgium every time. And I saw Underworld last year in Antwerp, and uh, they had that extra little pep, even though you could tell it was a preset set. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was uh, I was at the Underworld show as well. Um, and yeah, Belgium has always been a quite a, a nice country uh, for bands to play in. I've heard, like I've, I've myself, I've been a couple of times backstage with a band, for example, in the Ancien Belgique in Brussels. Great venue. And for many bands, it's like their most favorite venue in the world because the food is great, the atmosphere is great, the sound, everything is, everything is perfect in a venue. I, even like um, it's a band from the UK. It's called Enter Shikari. Um, they recorded um, their last show uh, they played over there, and they now sold it to support their uh, technicians as well. So the, all the proceeding of that live concert went to their um, uh, technicians and merch guy. Cool. And it was recorded in the ASEAN Belgique. So, yeah, definitely the more people you speak in the industry, the more you, you hear that they love Belgium as a country to play at. There's something about it. There's something about it. And actually, on the Underworld note, their Everything Everything live album is recorded in Brussels, just to give an extra oh, shout good, out yeah. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. But even like like bands like Pearl Jam, um, they don't play that many festivals. They have all the Roskilde and something like Pink Pop, I think, again, after 13 years. But apparently, like Rock Folk, so they don't play many festivals, but at Rock Folk, so they played, I think, seven times now. So they make an exception for you guys. The beer's that good. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Right indeed. On. Right. So on. that's lovely. Huh. Well, if I may say, as someone who's lived here 18 years as a as an outsider who's now somewhat inside, you guys are a little bit reserved as a as a Belgian species until it's time to let go, and especially like <laughs> 10 minutes in, once the beer kicks in, that's where all, <laughs> all the energy shakes loose. So. <laughs> Sounds familiar, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Dance yeah, floor is empty definitely. for the first 10 minutes, and then it yeah. starts, and then everybody floods in. Okay, we can let go now. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That really sounds like us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's part of the but chart, even, right? <laughs> yeah, even, even on festivals, it's like that. Like Mostly, like, the first two or three songs is like a bit, not lame, but it's like more relaxed. And then the moment we lose our shit, we, we lose it, you know, like... Get out that of the we're way. the hardest mush pit people are dancing people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, I'm really aware that we have the best festivals in the world. You know, something that everyone needs to agree on. I've, I've, I've been to so many festivals in Europe now. I've been on tour through the US and I've seen many venues. And I can, I can honestly say, not because I'm Belgian, but because I've, I think I've encountered so many different situations that like Belgium has the best festivals around regarding organization and not, not maybe atmosphere or whatever, but the backstage is always on point. The stages, everything is like perfect. And that's, that's not always the case in Europe. True. Or anywhere I've seen backstage at some places, venues and otherwise, and things get very, very mm -hmm. chaotic. You guys, yeah, definitely. you guys have a little bit of that, that German precision when you get into it, I've mm -hmm. noticed too. When it's time to yeah, do the work, that, we rock it out. And then when it's time to party, yeah. we rock it out. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Cool, cool. Well, I suppose just before we drift away from it, have you have you talked to any of the artists involved in this? Have you reached out to them and let them know about the cause? No, nah, so so for the artists who didn't reach out to them in the moment, especially not the international ones, because I think Every country has its own stuff to go through. Uh -huh. um, but what, we're looking at the possibilities with some of the Belgian artists, maybe um, in a, because this, uh, this project will 
definitely last until the 1st of April. So that's the end goal for now. Uh -huh. um, but we want to keep the momentum going, you know, like we're going to enroll more photographers along the way and have some nice initiatives um, that are coming along. And we're thinking like, maybe we're going to contact um, some of the Belgian uh, bands because, you know, um, start local. Yeah. So yeah. And it's also because we have some photographers out of house photographers, some of, for some of the bands like Nils de Stadba, that is one of the biggest uh, Flemish artists at the moment. And his photographer, Jonas, uh, which you know as well, uh -huh. is selling prints and he knows the guy. So maybe we're going to ask like, hey, are you willing to maybe sign five prints or are we going to sell them uh, through a bidding? Absolutely. That would be a great project. Yeah. Yeah, so that's maybe one of the things we were not sure yet. You know, we're like we we we're, we're live for one week. Um, we're still figuring out how to do it. We wanted to go live now so we can be ready for the holiday season. So the first the people who ordered until now are uh, receiving their prints. Um, but yeah, we're looking at all the different kind of options what we can do with this to to collect as much money as possible for the for the cost. Excellent. And you should, man. We're all in this together. And it goes back to the scene. I mean, musicians have also been expressing a lot of uh, a lot of support for the venues they play and the whole scene around it. Because mm -hmm. obviously, no venue, no gig, no, uh, no glory. Definitely. And, and it would be fun to have some of these artists on board, you know, because, well, in my opinion, it's nothing more than sometimes an autograph, but it can raise the value to something. And and raise more money for a good cause just because of that one simple movement of the hand, you know? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I would, I would love to have their support, but that's something that we're doing to do in a, in a second phase because what you have to know is that like the six photographers who organize this now, we all have full-time jobs besides the photography. Ah. So we, we've put this entire thing in place in four weeks. Uh, long evenings uh, collecting all the data we needed and, and figuring everything out. So full-time job during the day and then building this entire project on the side, it was quite a... Uh, an effort. Uh, uh, yeah, quite an effort, yeah. So for that reason, we, we thought like, let's go live for Christmas so we can already deliver the first sprints. And now we see in a second phase on what the additional things are that we can, what we can do. Cool, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Good. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys have your uh, your head screwed on right about how you're doing this. And like I said, I mean, the website's tight. The photos are tight. Everything I did, a, I'm going to make a purchase later for the wife for Christmas, but I can't tell you what mm. on air. She listens to the show <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but uh, everything's real smooth. And I mean, on my side of things, I haven't seen a single kink. Actually, I don't think I don't think it's weird in the interview, too. I, all I'd add myself as a, a part time web designer is putting a few of those photos on the front page so people can directly see what's on offer. But I mean, yeah, so that's, that's your biggest problem. You're doing right. Yeah. So that's a, uh, well, the, the website was built by me in, I think I did around four days, uh, not including the web shop, like filling with products or something else, it's work. but I am aware that the front page needs more photos and I'm working on that at the moment. So maybe by the time this is released, it will have a main page with may, way more photos, like featured products and stuff like that. All right. So on. that's a work in progress. Right on. So the pressure's on you and you've heard this before. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. And I, I've studied web design in the past as well. So I know the stuff that had to be better. But again, I wanted to go live that we ensure the things for Christmas and then we'll see all the adaptations that come along the way. I'm already really happy with the end result, you know. And you should be. Yeah, for a project like that. I think any of us who have ever cobbled together a website or even looked at it know it's well, it's like everything in creativity and even the work side of it. It's evolution and stages. And, mm -hmm. you know, like you said, stage one, get this thing out there, especially the Christmas season. This is when people are looking for gifts, uh, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. I think this year might actually be OK for the gift giving as an industry because it cheers people up and we can all use a little bit of it. So that's, mm -hmm. that's the right mindset and then grow it and see it. I'd certainly, yeah. I'd certainly, and I hope, you know, I hope this peanut of a podcast helps get the word out there. This should go global for Belgium, for the entire scene. It's such a brilliant idea. And I mean, it just, it also comes back to one of the central themes that I think about this and a lot of, a lot of creativity, whether it's music or photography or otherwise, a lot of us are about community. 
Well, if there are, if there would be any international photographers listening, they can always reach out to me and maybe in that same store, we can rebuild it and uh, make it a more international thing. But um, yeah, that's something, if, the, if there's the interest to do that, they can contact me or they can, they can start their own initiative and use the same name because I think the name works great. You know, it's, oh, it's perfect. A crappy year, and then the, like the the, um, the cultural rescue aid by uh, photographers, it works perfectly. And thank you, I, I, I forgot who came up with the name, but like, if people want to use it around uh, around the world, go ahead, call it the same, and do the same thing for your local music industry. The more we can help out, the the better, I think. Absolutely. And you're at the heart of the art when you say that stuff, man. Obviously, we got to worry about uh, business in some respects with all that but at the end of the day we all feed off each other and make these things grow mm -hmm. yeah. definitely yeah. awesome nathan thank you so much for this this is a, a really good chat and i'm loving this project and definitely for the music scene and as an ex-catering horica man as we call it here uh thanks from the scene for starting this I can talk yeah, well, about another hour. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> me as well, probably. Because as, for the last two or three weeks, I've been like, beside my full time job, I did a second full time job, like building the website and making the graphics for social media. So, yeah, it, it feels like a, a little child has been born together with six other people, you know? So, it's, it's really fun to talk about it. And I want to thank you for the support as well, for letting me, uh, letting me share all this information on your podcast. My pleasure, man. It's been a real hit one, too. I won't have to go through it for getting out the shitty edits. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is all real, folks. We did it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, that's what she's telling you. You know, he probably cut out a couple of parts, but uh... <laughs> no, 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 no. no I this is all like, real, yeah. You'll let me know afterwards if there's anything for the lawyers you're concerned about. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's just it's, it's perfect, man. <laughs> easy, easy. Well, here, mate, I want, to, uh, I want to talk to you more about your photography as a, a music photographer, but I want to make that another segment so we can focus on crap at the uh okay. in the in the focus it deserves so Great. let's cut away in a little bit but before you get out of here for this segment please give me just a few links anything that you think relates to this project go for it plug away okay so everyone who's interested in some nice photos of your favorite artists um, and there are some really artsy photos in there as well really beautiful bl uh, black and white uh, pictures Double exposure is not always your regular concert photo. Please check out um, crab.photo um, and follow us on our social media as well, which is, I haven't mentioned that one yet, is we use buy the crab. So like buy is the things you buy. Um, and we use the same hashtag. So if you follow us on Instagram or on Facebook, share it with your friends. We do a worldwide shipping. Shipping in Belgium is included in the cost for worldwide shipping. I think we... Uh, have an additional nine euros, but that covers the entire world. Um, and yeah, it would be great to uh, to see you guys buying some of our stuff. Um, again, crab.photo is a website, and I hope you like it. And on my side, I like it, and I endorse everything you say 10,000%, as well as the uh, just effort overall, mate. That's the stuff that we need right now. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Pleasure, pleasure. Nathan, thanks for dropping by, man. Yeah, thanks. Easy. Thanks for having me. Easy. And that's my chat with Mr. Nathan Doblar on the crap.photo initiative. No, that's the website. The initiative is crap, by which I mean cultural rescue aid by photographers. Yeah, there's all kinds of crap flying around here, so it gets a little confusing. What can I say, boys and girls? Maybe after this birthday, this is the beginning of the great senility for Andy. Who knows? And let's find out over the future voyages of this little podcast, This Photo Life. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe and do all that good stuff if you enjoyed the show. It really does make a difference. And in particular, it will get the crap initiative out there just that little bit more. We're on all the major podcast networks. You know what to do there. 
We're also on youtube.com forward slash Andy McPhoto for rebroadcasts of the podcast, so you know what to do there. And I guess on that note, I can leave you alone and let you go about your day as long as you go to crap.photo and check out this awesome initiative, just to give them one last plug on the way out the door. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andy McSweeney of Andy McSweeney Photography and Photo Tour Bruges. Don't forget to join me in the beautiful city of Bruges if you have a chance and want to improve your photography. I've been going since 2012 with over 2,000 guests from beginner to pro and everything in between with daily photo tours of the open tour and private tour variety. There's also something for all you photographers on your budget, whether it's smartphone or 10 grand a gear. So feel free to check us out and the website for that, of course, linked in the description is phototourbruges.com. That's me. That's it. You know what to do at this point. Take me out of your ears. Pick up the camera. Get out there. And get shooting. See ya.